The officer said Nazario did not have a visible license plate. The lieutenant says, though, he wanted to pull into a more well-lit area. The officers then considered this to be a high-risk traffic stop and went out with their guns drawn up to Nazario's SUV. The chief now says the officers could have done a better job de-escalating the situation verbally. It's, a, it's a, an encounter. It's a citizen. It's an officer. It's a, an opportunity to build a relationship. Um, I, I will tell you that the officers exercise their discretion in not charging Mr. Nazario. Um, we have run this police department for a long time on what we consider to be an end game philosophy. What, what are we doing at the end? What is the end objective of every call for service? If we go to a call for service and we're dealing with a criminal event, does it necessarily mean that we need to get that person into the criminal justice system? Or is there something else we can do to resolve the situation and, and move along? So going forward, that's where we're headed, is, is continue down that path. We've got work to do. We know we've got work to do. Um, there's been some damage to our relationships with the community here, and we've got to get back on track to fix it. I appreciate the council's support, the, uh, the manager's support in backing me. We will be open and transparent about how we do it. We're going to reach out to our community stakeholders, get input from them. Um, we're cooperating with the Virginia State Police's investigation into the matter. Uh, we spent most of the day Monday turning over materials to them to facilitate that investigation, and we're waiting on the results of that. Um, been contacted by the Attorney General's Office here in Virginia and their Community Out uh, Civil Rights Unit. Uh, they want to do some records, uh, searches, and, and go back and look through our stuff historically um, to ensure that there's no uh, patterns of, of discriminatory and uh, abusive police behavior. I invite it. There's nothing there. Now, the chief says Gutierrez was the one who was fired because he was the more experienced officer and was training the other officer, Daniel Crocker. Crocker is relatively new to the force, and the chief says he felt like Crocker was trying to de-escalate the situation at times, and that's why he was not fired. Now, the chief was also asked whether the department owes Nazario an apology. The chief said he did not feel that Nazario was owed an apology, saying he felt Nazario could have de-escalated the situation himself and complied more with the officers. So that is what is the latest here in Windsor reporting live. I'm Brendan Ponson on News 3. Thank you, Brendan. And you can watch the full video of the news conference. It's up right now on our website at WTKR.com. From the JES First Warning Weather Center, here's Chief Meteorologist Patrick Rocky. Well, the clouds have been rolling in the past couple of hours, and we are tracking the threat for some strong to severe storms later on this evening. Number one concern will be storms producing winds that could be in excess of 60 miles per hour. Also looking out for some heavy downpours that could cause some localized flooding, some large hail. Not out of the question. Not out of the question. We could have an isolated tornado, but that is lowest on our scale of concern here. So who is under the gun for the threat for severe weather? Just about all of us, with the exception of Accomack County on the eastern shore, we're at a level one out of five threat from the Storm Prediction Center. Right now, for most of us, things are dry, but we are starting to see a little bit of wet weather make its way into the south side of Hampton Roads. Right now, a little shower falling around Naval Station, Norfolk, northern portions of Chesapeake, and into Portsmouth. But again, we have a little bit of wet weather for Accomack County on the eastern shore, but most of us are dry. That will change later on this evening. We fast forward to 8 o'clock. We see some storms in inland Virginia making their way down the peninsulas to the south side by around 10 o'clock and then offshore after that there will still be a few showers overnight, maybe a rumble of thunder and maybe a couple of lingering showers for your commute tomorrow morning. But this should be a pretty quick hit this evening, but we will have that threat for severe weather tonight, some showers overnight and maybe a few tomorrow morning. So I know a lot of you are already thinking about the weekend. We'll talk about our chances for rain this weekend coming up in your seven day forecast. Well, there's a high demand for people who can take on the highway. A national truck driver shortage is getting worse during the pandemic. And as News 3 reporter Kofu Lasaki explains, more than 100,000 jobs could need to be filled in just a couple of years. Truck drivers have been there to deliver the goods we needed most during the pandemic. Essential workers answering the call during the chaos. In the beginning stages of the pandemic, there were empty shelves. 
And it was, you know, it, we, everybody was standing around wanting to know when the next truck was coming. But the industry continues to face a shortage of qualified drivers, and things have only worsened during the pandemic. We're talking about a shortage of qualified drivers, uh, motor carriers because of government regulations and their own internal, you know, safety responsibilities and insurance requirements have strict hiring criteria. It's causing problems for the entire supply chain. According to the American Truck Driving Association, around Around 60,000 more drivers were needed in 2019. They predict that number will soar to over a million in the next decade. Based on those earlier forecasts, uh, it is predicted that number could rise to over 100,000 as a shortage across the country by 2023. The Virginia Trucking Association says there are several reasons for the shortage. First, truck driving schools shut down and couldn't reopen until it was safe. Then pandemic changes at the DMV resulted in a backlog of people who still need to take driving tests. Meanwhile, the driving population is getting older and retiring sooner. And new drug and alcohol screenings are weeding out high-risk employees. Our economy is coming back a little better than we thought. And with that comes the demand for the movement of freight and the truck drivers to, to meet that demand.